All right, today, folks, so we are worrying about the three economic questions. So we talked about the basic concepts. We got ourselves scarcity, the idea that there are finite resources to satisfy unlimited wants. So because of a scarcity, we have to make choices. And we only have so many resources. Remember, we got resources for factors of production, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. If we only have so much of all of those, that means we can only produce so much stuff. So because of this, scarcity forces choice upon us, and it forces choice upon societies, economic systems, and uh, countries as a whole. So we got these three economic questions, we're going to call them. Okay, so uh, this idea of scarcity is why we have uh, the questions we got to ask. So we got three of them. The first question is, uh, what goods and services should be produced? The second one is, how should these goods and services be produced? And the third one is, for whom are the goods and services produced? Or simply, uh, who consumes the goods and services? All right, now we got the three questions here. If you want to make it very basic, uh, the three questions are what, how, and who. If you can remember those, then you're in good shape. What, how, and who. Where, don't care. Uh, when, doesn't matter. Okay, what, how, and who. What are we going to make? How are we going to make it? And who is it for? Okay, now that first question right there, well, what goods and services should be produced? This is about uh, resource allocation. So what are we gonna use our resources for? Knowing that if we use our resources to make one thing, we can't use them now to make something else. Let's say I've got a ton of steel and I use that ton of steel to make a tank. Well, that means that now I can't use that steel to uh, make a car or to make uh, a bunch of wash machines or something else out of the steel. The steel has been committed. Same thing with labor. If people are working, uh, they uh, produce one thing. So they're in fact reproducing uh, the wash machine. Now they can't be in a different factory producing a car. Okay, so labor is finite. So that means we have to decide how this is going to be allocated as well. All right. So this is all about resource allocation. What are we going to make with the limited resources we have? Okay, knowing that we have to give up something else in order to produce something. Okay, which is the opportunity cost. So if we produce that tank with our steel, the opportunity cost would be the wash machines or the cars or whatever else we would have produced with that steel. Okay. So the guns are butter scenario, all right? And we did that with the production possibilities curve. We can have military goods, consumer goods. If we use our resources for one, we can't use them for another. Now, you don't want one or the other. You don't want military goods or consumer goods, right? The guns or the butter. What you want is both, the guns and the butter. Military goods and consumer goods. Bad timing. So the question is, what is the balance going to be between the two, okay? So if you want both and not either, what is the balance between those two items going to be? The, uh, so uh, you could increase funding for education. Uh, if it goes to my salary, I'm going to be good with that. Uh, but you got other things, right, as a society. Maybe we're going to put our resources to producing solar panels and some windmills. Uh, but that means now we can produce a, a coal pl power plants and nuclear power plants, right? Because we use the resources to make one instead of the other. Or we can make more of uh, that friendly little guy right there. But that means we give up something like this. Okay, now uh, that is a uh, Sony Walkman from the 1980s, super fancy, was battery powered and was portable music and it played cassette tapes. Uh, but obviously uh, we're not gonna put our resources into this because that's not what people want. They want that thing right there, okay? Now, that second question, how should goods and services be produced? This is a question about efficiency. Because if you can make things in lots of different ways, why are we going to make it in one way instead of another one? Why shall we employ our land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, our resources, to uh, make an item in one particular way, in one particular fashion, instead of another one? Okay, so an example of this would be, let's say we're harvesting crops. So we can have those big old combines, you know, I'm talking about the harvesters, and things go like this, round and round, and harvest the crop. We can use those, or we can have a team of 50 guys out there with scythes, right? The Grim Reaper thing out there, uh, whacking down the uh, grain and uh, the wheat in the corn. We could do that, but obviously that seems a lot more inefficient, okay? Instead of having a team of 50 guys with scythes, you can have a one guy in the combine harvesting all that same crop, okay? So we can do it that way, and then you only have one person instead of 50 guys, which is going to be a much more efficient way of doing things. 
Uh, so you can do it that way, or you can have classrooms like this with a little bunch of fancy gadgets and stuff, or you can have an old-fashioned chalkboard. Well, one way seems to be more efficient. It's a little bit more helpful right now, having the camera and the computer and all that stuff. Or you can have part-time workers instead of full-time. Again, it's a question of efficiency, how we're going to use those resources. The third question is, for whom are these goods and services produced? This is about public choice. Who gets the stuff? Who are we making things for? All right. A lot of times can dictate how, or excuse me, what it is that we are going to produce. So uh, we're going to produce, uh, let's say, those big fancy TVs for a guy like this. Uh, maybe not for a society like this. Uh, this sort of society would have a completely different demand, which would mean they will produce entirely different things for what it is that they desire. All right. So. Uh, these economic systems, when we get to those, we're going to talk about those next. Economic systems, and we're going to look at socialism, communism, and capitalism specifically. All those have to answer these three economic questions in some capacity or another. Okay, what are we going to make? How are we going to make it? Who is it for? Well, that depends on various priorities and goals. Okay, if we're talking about market economies, they want to be efficient. They want to have some economic freedom. You want to have security and predictability. All systems want that. Uh, you want some equity, perhaps. And uh, you want to have some growth and innovation. Not just more stuff, but better stuff. Okay? Now, you might have other goals also in a society. And this will also dictate how a society might answer these questions. What are they going to make? How are they going to make it? And who is it for? So maybe you value health care or welfare more or less. Maybe you care more about the environment or less about it. Maybe you want some space exploration happening and you want to go to Mars. Maybe you care about uh, defense spending and having a more powerful military. Obviously, that will affect your decisions. Maybe you just want siestas, right? A nap time in the middle of the day. That's a cultural thing in some places. Well, that'll have economic effects. Maybe you care more about uh, certain types of education, right? All this is going to be affecting how it is you answer those three economic questions. And the each economic system will answer them in different ways. So I will leave you here with pie. It's a beautiful apple pie with a nice lattice on it. So think about that, especially if you get some, you know, nice warm apple pie. They get that bluebell vanilla ice cream right, right next to it, and it kind of melts on the plate and soaks into the crust of the pie. And delicious.